Good evening and welcome to today. Our evening service on Wednesdays to help us connect, to be reminded of the fact that we are beloved children of God, maybe just simply to reconnect and reflect. May this be a time of refreshment here at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Tucson. And so as we begin, I would like to begin with a quote from Henry Nolan. One of the main tasks of theology is to find words that do not divide, but unite, that do not create conflict, but unity, that do not hurt, but heal. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me. A prayer from the early tradition. May God the Father bless us. May Christ take care of us. The Holy Ghost enlighten us all the days of our life. The Lord be our defender and keeper of body and soul, both now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let not my doubts nor my darkness speak to me. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let my heart always welcome your love. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let not my doubts nor my darkness speak to me. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let my heart always welcome your love. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let 
not my doubts, nor my darkness speak to me. Lord Jesus Christ, your light shines within us. Let my heart always welcome your love. From the Psalms. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. soul is waiting for God. Our hearts find joy in the Lord. Oh, 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 From the Gospel of Mark. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he had gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. Yeah. 
In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. How many of you shuddered a moment when you heard Jesus speak about never being forgiven or an unforgivable sin. I know I have. I did. That's a troubling passage, isn't it? What does it mean to have an unforgivable sin? I guess it means that there's just some things that can't be forgiven, won't be forgiven. That's kind of tough, isn't it? Well, let's stop and think about ourselves. Have you ever been in a situation and someone said you need to just forgive? And you're like, I can't forgive? You can't forgive that. You saw something on the news, read something in the paper, and you're like, that's just unforgivable. Just can't, just can't do it. Maybe you saw on the news someone's normally a family member of someone who died very horribly go, I can't forgive. What are those things? What are the things that to you are unforgivable? Where's your limit, so to speak? And I invite you to have conversations with others about what theirs might be you might find some consonance with others. Certain things tend to run in similar veins. But you might be surprised how one person might consider something completely and totally unforgivable that you're like is, well, what's the big deal? What's yours? And why? Now let's think back to Jesus and what he's talking about. Blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Why? Because as it says at the end, for they had said he has an unclean 
spirit. Which means that these scribes and Pharisees, these individuals, had discerned that Jesus, what he was doing it by, was with an unclean spirit, that he was by the power, he was a demon or possessed by a demon. That it had nothing to do with God, it had everything to do with Beelzebul. Now, why would that be a problem? Well, stop and think. The scribes and the Pharisees were the people who were teaching the people what it meant to have faith. And here's an individual healing and caring, showing compassion for the sick, the poor, gathering the lost, feeding the hungry. This is by the power of the devil? How often do we sometimes make our decisions about what is allowable or what is not based on who does it. A simple thing might be, um, you know, when you look at the way some children act in public, you might have greater tolerance for your own versus another's. Or more likely, you might have greater tolerance for your grandkids than for your children. Why is that? Why do we again make distinctions? And especially why do we make distinctions when looking at another person and believing that they have to be evil? If we're called to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and our neighbor and our, as ourselves, what room is there for declaring another person evil? Not something they did, but the person, the core of their being, their motivation. And again, if you are ascribing that level of power to something other than God, are you loving the Lord your God with all your soul and all your heart and all your mind and all your strength? Or are you leaving a little side off of it because you think maybe there's something else? Not that you love the devil or anything else like that, but that you have room in heaven for more than God. So what's forgivable? What's unforgivable? And how do we forgive? When we see some of these horrendous things that happen, I think of the mass shooting at Mother Emanuel AM's AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, by a young white man who joined him for a Bible study and then killed everyone in the rooms except one, including three pastors. To start a race war. Because he wasn't going to be replaced. And the church forgave him. Do you think they really were able to forgive when their beloved pastors were gunned down? When their, they saw a Bible study so horribly, 
abused, turned into something so very wrong. Yet they forgave. And at the funeral service and the reconciliation service they did, one of the big songs they sang loudly is Amazing Grace. Do we trust that that grace is so amazing? Do we trust that God's love really is the final word? How might we learn about forgiveness by thinking about the unforgivable and realizing that we're forgiven because God so loved us and that then we're called to go and do the same. And remember that God loves you and so do I. Amen. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer our Savior taught us, the Lord's Prayer, in whichever form you wish. I will simply use the one, the translation used by the Tizay community. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Keep us from temptation and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Only in God my soul can find its rest. 
find its rest and peace. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy. Find its rest, find its rest and peace. In God alone my soul can find rest and peace. In God my peace and joy only in God my soul can find its rest find its rest and peace As we depart this time that we have together, we really don't leave. The body of Christ continues. The church persists. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it continues. It continues in each and every one of us as we wrestle with what it means to follow, to take up a cross to love our neighbors, ourselves, to love our enemies. Heck, just to love ourselves. And as we go forward, go with this blessing. Go now to follow the way of Jesus. See others as he did. Dare to give freely as he did. And to love unconditionally as he did. Go embraced by the source of life, love and hope in the company of the word of life, encouraged by the breath of life. Amen. Oh God, keep me safe. For I trust in you, the pathway to life you teach me, with you is peace and joy in all fullness. Oh God, keep me safe. For I trust in you, the pathway to life you teach me, with you is peace and joy in all fullness. Oh God, keep me safe. For I trust in you, the pathway to life you teach me. With you is peace.